What's going on everybody, C4 here. Before we pop in the video, I just want to let you guys all know that we, and me, have completely updated the Patreon tiers and the Patreon page for the Meta 19 season. You're going to get way more content than you have gotten before. So if you want to go out of your way to support my channel, like a bunch of you guys have already done, and I am internally grateful, check it out. It is in the top link in the video description. This year, you're going to be able to get access to early videos, you're going to get access to a special Patreon-only podcast, Patreon-only fantasy football leagues, and bigger than ever is you get to be involved in the most popular video on this channel, The Realistic Rebuild. So go check that out. A lot more content than what I just talked about, as you can see all the tears flying up. But that's enough of this plug. Let's get into the video. What's going on, everybody? C4 here, and welcome to the second to last episode of the ultimate rebuild series and this was a close one we were out gonna do the pittsburgh steelers and women saints and i just said last second we get we'll just go with the steelers because the saints have perennial mvp winners and stuff like that at least there's something a little bit there with the pittsburgh steelers plus this is really the only format you're gonna see the steelers really have to need a rebuild is when you're in you know season 2026 and ab's gone levy on bell's gone you know really you have to reshape and rebuild the pittsburgh steelers back up so looking at the roster right now, uh, we don't really have much at uh, running back, as you can see, no more Le'Veon Bell. But at quarterback, we have Matt Coral, who uh, formerly was actually supposed to go to my Florida Gators, but then flipped last second, went to Ole Miss. So I'm not a huge fan of him. He also looks 75 years old in this picture, but he's a 94 quick. He's an unbelievable quarterback. Um, you know, fans are already just who's Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, we got Colin Johnson from the University of Texas, a monster wide receiver at 6'6". Uh, 87 quick. We got Juju Smith-Schuster, who's a 93 overall quick dev. Okay. Uh, offensive line. We have a perfect 99 in Chukwuma Akorafor, who was a mid-round pick, I believe, for the Pittsburgh Steelers this year. Uh, obviously, he hit. He's not, he might. I don't know if he'll be this good in real life. Probably not. Uh, but he still is a nice little prospect. And everything else on the offensive line, outside of right guard, we got three A's from the left side of the offensive line, which is good. And an 84 right tackle. I'll take it. Defensively speaking, okay, um, we got this guy, P.J. Cunningham, 85, he's, oh, okay, this guy looks like an emerging superstar, uh, Artie Burns in the secondary, we got T.J. Watt, who's an 88 overall, he's 32 though, so he's getting up there in age, Bud Dupree's still there, he's at 82 as well, oh, Patterson, what's your age, 28, Jordan Patterson, 90 superstar, not a real player, defense is looking pretty bad, offense looking pretty good, minus running back, all right, we have our work cut out for us, so let's get into the rebuild, the ultimate rebuild of the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, so looking at free agents here, uh, you know, we'll, we'll spend a little bit, because I want to win the Super Bowl, obviously, but uh, we're not going to go all, all in. So first up, we're going to spend our money wisely. At corner, we're going with Hightower. Gabe Hightower, 89, plus two overall, with uh, a superstar dev would be a massive upgrade. We got Lesueur. We don't have a starting outside linebacker, 81, good age. Henry here at 6'5", 312. I'm actually going to move him to D-tackle, which he should get a nice little bump, and then just a punter. But, I mean, we could go in on some wide receivers. You got Michael Thomas is still there, Stephon Diggs, Mike Evans, a couple of veterans. I'm not super interested. We have another linebacker here in Atkins. He's an 88. He's 26, but you know we do have TJ Watt there. And we'll go with the cheaper option and spend a little bit more at corner. Now here's where I think I'm actually going. I'm gonna Jair Alexander's here from the from the uh, Packers, which actually was the last rebuild. Um, I want to see if we're not gonna double up on the linebackers. Already Burns at 82. You know he probably should be at playing nickel corner right now. So we'll give him maybe a one year at 12-3. We're a one point favorite. At least it gives us an option that if we whiff on one, hopefully we won't miss on both of them. So let's see. So our first draft to add to the free agency hall of not much, but we'll take it with bringing in uh, Hightower, the 89 superstar corner, as well as we were able to bring in. That's it. Uh, <laughs> it's, you know, it's work of progress. You don't, you don't always hit. Actually, that's a lie. We got Henry, who we're probably actually got the start at defensive end right now. Uh, but our draft was outstanding for having limited drafting resources and stuff. Thank God this is probably one in about, I'd say, four drafts. That you could just draft the guy with the highest combine grade, and they turn out to be really, really good. It's kind of a shot in the dark with the dev trades, because I, I didn't really look at the draft stories or anything like that. Uh, and by didn't really, I mean, I never, I don't think in my life, 
outside of like a pair and crow video highlighting it have i ever looked at them we hit on the first round 22 overall right outside we're gonna make him a left outside linebacker we get eduardo brennan from notre dame 81 superstar he was number nine in total talent we got that at pick 22 so which if that's number nine there must be some studs in this year's draft class uh, the second round, we do need a starter at running back, so we hit on Byron Reese, 75 quick. I looked at the other running back. There was two running backs that looked pretty poised. The other guy's 76 normal, so I think I'd probably take the 75 right now, especially with that 95 speed. Um, then in the third round, we get a 76 quick dev outside linebacker for Florida National, Morris Malone. Uh, because of his size, I don't really know where we're going to stand. Ow, I don't even know what defense we're running. Apparently, we're running a 4-3, even though it seems like Pittsburgh's run a 3-4 for quite some time. Uh, fourth round here, we got a 76 normal dev tackle. As you can tell by the strength, we went with the highest bench press. And in the best, just high bench press a pick of all time, Rondell Hoover. Even though he's already here with a confidence boost, he was really a 79 superstar, 93 strength. Look at that, 53 awareness. This freak here, like this general stats, gets shoveled around once every couple drafts. And once you get out on him, he's going to be outstanding. This is a guy after one year probably being a starter, he could very well be in the high 80s. Uh, we got a 74 tight end, Chip Shockey. Wonder if he's any relation to Jeremy. He will actually be our starter this year at tight end because we have nothing there. Uh, then we just get a depth center. But all in all, very, very good draft class considering we had like 10 players scout it before we jump. All right, so at the midseason of our first year of the rebuild, we're 4-4 four four at the bottom of the AFC North, but it's very, very tight. It's toy. It's toy like a tiger. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're all right. We're, we're not panicking yet. Uh, look at the contracts. We got TJ Watt. That's it. TJ Watt's the only guy that's going to get a deal. He only wants a two-year deal. 17 mil. We'll actually see if we can get this right away. I'll tweak it a little bit if he's not happy. He is not happy, but we will make it work because I still want him. He's probably the face of the defense, all things considered. Uh, but other than that, it's not that bad in terms of contracts. We're going to have plenty of money to potentially splurge in this upcoming free. End of the year, we failed to make the playoffs. Head coach Brad Terry Shaw, not the happiest. 7 8 and 1, bottom of the AFC North, which is definitely a downturn from where we were last season. We were spectacular last season, but um, being last of the AFC North in the first year, never that pretty. Uh, but our quarterback is playing insane. Matt Coral, almost 5,100 passing yards, 41 TDs, 16 picks. He is one of the premier quarterbacks in this save. Uh, running attack Reeves as a rookie a thousand yards 12 TDs. That's not bad, but 13 fumbles my god. That's awful What's this 84 carrying? It's not even that bad That might be the most I think that's the most fumbles I've ever seen uh, Receiving 110 catches Colin Johnson 11 yards 6 TDs. We got 107 catches 1600 yards 12 TDs from Juju smith Schuster. over almost 1100 yards 15 touchdowns from Monte O'Neill and we're not even running spread offense. Jeez, these numbers are are pretty... Are we running spread offense? Let me double check the defense. There's no way, because it doesn't automatically go spread offense. Uh, defensively, Trey Carlisle, 125 tackles, three interceptions on the sacks front. We got six and a half from TJ Watt. We were able to resign, but outside of that, not getting enough pressure. Um, three picks, three picks from Hightower, free and signing, as well as 88 tackles. That's pretty damn good. I don't really care about the yearly awards, to be completely honest with you. What are my coach... We running here schemes We're not run spread look at that common west coast i do know that for whatever reason we're running three four so we'll fix that out we'll get the doug peterson playbook in uh but yeah not good enough not good enough here in year number one so let's pop out and get into the off season for you all right so here's our draft recap as we get ready for year two and ups and downs throughout this draft but still plenty of good talent now i want to i want to find out I was going to draft, this might take a second, I probably should have had it queued up. There we go. I was going to draft this guy. He was my number one. Four! Lucky Nugent was going to be my number one target. 83 slow, but that would have been unreal. And instead of taking him, 83, that's like one of the highest bases I've ever seen. We ended up going with Leroy Boyette, the free safety from Miami. I thought 6'2", 220, guy was even perfect, 78 slow. So not a bad pick, but... Oh, man. The reason why I didn't do it is because, look, our third wide receiver last year, he's only like a 70-some overall. But he had like 15 touchdowns, so it didn't really matter. But, oh, my God. Uh, then we whiffed on Sean Shepard here, but we did draft him to be a D-tackle. So he's a 68 defensive end. 
And he goes to, clearly you're going to play against the run. We'll make it prototype. Maybe 72? Somewhere in that range. 75! Very nice. Makes our draft class look that much better. Uh, then we just went all in on offensive linemen. Just to fill up. We only had one guy and a lot of depth chart spot. This was the best one, Nate Garoppolo. Maybe Jimmy G's brother. I don't know, but 77 superstar. Then we just got two other 77, 73 tight end. 72 kicker. So you say, where's the rest of the holes? Where'd you, where'd you fill? What, what else did you do? We didn't see free agency. Oh, just because we signed Todd Gurley on a one-year deal, ignore the 78 acceleration. Player for the thumbnail. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. So yeah, we signed Todd Gurley. We are also able to bring in this guy, Green Beckham, 80 overall. Gianni, Green Beckham from Ole Miss, 80 overall corner, just kind of a stop gift guy. Because I couldn't sign Mr. Jalen Ramsey. And we also got Daniel Hunter coming over for the Minnesota Vikings. 86 overall. He's pretty old, but still will do well in the sim as our defensive line actually looks pretty decent right now. And no one on the team's below a B grade. Oh, except our piece of shit tight end. But, and center, I guess. But he's a superstar. So, hey, let's just not finish last in the division. We'll call it a day. So we're sitting at 6-1 and one at midseason. Loving that Todd Gurley signing. Uh, so looking at who we need to look at re-signing, Okwara Ford, yes. Duncan English, yes. Juju, yes. Um, we'll, we'll probably wait on the one-year rentals here in Gurley and Hunter. And uh, for Hoffman Ellis, even though he's 84, quick dev, we have that 99 superstar dev tackle that we drafted. That's probably good enough. Um, Glover, yes, I think, even though we drafted a corner, or drafted a free safety, he has that slow dev. He's 78 slow. I think I'd rather take a 2781 normal over that at this given time. Uh, so yeah, we're going to spend a lot of money, a lot of resources, retaining our own talent. That is the strength of a good team and a big reason why we're sick. Oh, kiss my ass. 13-3 and three wild card. Fuck's sakes, man. Uh, but our team's looking really good and it's only year one. Oh my god, the Browns 14-2. and two. We didn't even win the North. That's why it's looking a little weird. Uh, look at that, Corral. It's been outstanding ever since we've been there. 4,500 yards, 39 TDs, 8 picks. The interceptions are in turnovers in general are coming down. Uh, run the ball, Todd Gurley, 1,200 yards, 10 TDs. Reeves got 10 touchdowns as well. Receiving, we got 87 catches, 880 and 4 from Colin Johnson. 1265 and 15 touchdowns from Juju Smith-Schuster, who has been nothing short of spectacular since we've been able to pop in. Look at that. That stretch. One of, the, one of the goats, one of the all-time greats. A uh, thousand yards here for Monte O'Neill. On the defensive side, uh, we got 128 tackles, four picks from Trey Carlisle. Uh, Patterson, 103 picks, 103 picks, 103 interceptions, 103 tackles, three interceptions. Uh, Green Beckham, who we signed as just a last-ditch stopgap free agent at corner, 82 tackles, three picks. So that's above and beyond expectations. Nine and a half sacks from Danielle Hunter. Uh, you know, there you go. There you go. Is what it is. Uh, so we are in the playoffs. We're in the playoffs. That's awesome. Baker Mayfield got the MVP, so the Browns are pretty dangerous right now. Uh, we have a wild card matchup at MetLife against the nine and seven Jets. We're gonna play the moments. I feel confident that we should probably get to at least the AFC Championship game this year. At all right, let's get it. Open drive, going to the red zone and. We don't stall. We convert with the touchdown. I believe that was a Todd Gurley rushing touchdown. Oh, we're in the red zone once again. Just give the Pittsburgh Steelers an elite running back and watch them go. 14-7 to right now as we are once again are just showing lethal execution in the red zone. And then uh, turnover. Now we're tied. Now we're losing. Okay. But still, get us in the red zone and finish out the drive. And we do that to regain the lead up four in the fourth quarter. We're stalling. We give up a touchdown late, but we're still executing. Man, we are converting on third downs, and there's the turnover we need. And, oh, my God, the Sim of all Sims decides that's the first time we don't convert. But either way, we're still fine and get by 38-31 to 31 on the day. Matt Cora led the team with uh, two touchdowns versus Sam Darnold went four touchdowns, two picks. So he got out dueled a little bit there, but good old Todd Gurley chipping in. 90 yards, 2 TDs. That rushing attack is too damn good as the Pittsburgh Steelers are moving on to the... Alright, so, familiar foe who I think we'll see quite a few times. Well, for quite a few times, as in potentially one more time. The Jags are our opponent here in the AFC. 
divisional round. Uh, but, you know, hopefully a lot of the guys are gone. We saw Jalen Ramsey on the free agency wire, so, you know, a transitioning period maybe for them. As this is a low-scoring battle, but we currently have that field goal lead, and we settle for another field goal. So pretty much polar opposites from our game against the Jets, where we just were lethal on third down. Right now, we're 0-3 and settling for field goals, and that's never a good sign in the sim. That usually is a pattern that spells for defeat. And there they go. Like They're getting touchdowns. It takes them two seconds to get a touchdown. Our defense can't stop them. Once again, I don't know, maybe they're the Achilles seal of the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Jacksonville Jaguars. We get a touchdown late to make it interesting here in the fourth quarter. It's been a rough, rough go here for the most part, but a late touchdown? We don't get it. We don't get it. Even more iconic duo. There's probably going to be a bunch of turnovers from Matt Corral as the Pittsburgh Steelers fall out of the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, just wasn't pretty. Just wasn't pretty. Only one touchdown on the day. Todd Gurley had a decent day. One for that's a nice little battle there. Uh, but ultimately, you got to give credit where credit's due. The Jags, you know, they held us. We had three straight drives where we had to settle for field goals, and they just kept scoring touchdowns. So that is a sad end to year number two. Let's pop into the third and final year and try to win the illustrious sixth Super Bowl for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So it's nearly all or nothing time for us. And it's the second last rebuild, so I feel like we can get a little crazy with our veterans. So, Joey Bosa and Jalen Ramsey it is. Unfortunately, Todd Gurley's retired, so why not use another popular name to lead our backfield? And that is Dalvin Cook, 87 overall. Uh, we got a Cook, uh, Lutz the kicker, and Gaddis here could be an upgraded wide receiver for. Basically spent all of our money, and I feel confident that we'll land most of these guys, and we'll probably drop 14 to 15. So we were able to land all of those big fishes in free agency, and our draft class was pretty decent as well. In the first round of pick 28, we got Gianni Valentine out of Florida State, 78 overall, normal, pretty good stats, pretty well balanced. Uh, second round, we had a 79 overall quick dev linebacker out of Wyoming, Wade Hallou Jr., one of these related to Roy Hallou, the former running back of the Redskins. Uh, pretty damn good though, 92 tackle, 91 hit fire, the tackling machine. Uh, then we got a 71 D end here in the third round. We got a couple 70s to round it out. You know, nothing spectacular. A nothing spectacular draft, but with the free agency class bringing in Joey Bosa, Jalen Ramsey, you gotta be a uh, fine. And Dalvin Cook. So let's get into the third and final year of the Pittsburgh Steelers rebuild and get us a chance. So a final preview of our roster entering our final year. Dalvin Cook now in the backfield. Matt Corral's up to a 93 at wide receiver. Juju Smith-Schuster is starting to decline a little bit. Should we call him Juju Smith-Kelly for everyone that's an OG streamer uh, for tuning into my streams? Is that what we call you guys, streamers? I don't know. Uh, but either way, wide receiver core is aging but still hanging on there. Offensive line is elite. Tight end is nothing special. Uh, on the defensive side, though, Joey Bosa, the most overpowered defensive end probably of this generation of Madden, 93. Um, we had Jalen Ramsey down in the secondary with high tower, 88 Patterson, Glover's an 81, linebacking core is pretty damn good as well. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, say, I'm feeling 14 to 15 wins here. Definitely not good enough for a perfect season, but good enough to be damn impressive and get us a buck. I guess spending all that money didn't really solve our problems as we finished the year 10 and 6. Um, looking at the stats, so at least we got an AFC North title under our belts. And for the single season stats, 4,700 passing yards, 32 TDs to 18 picks for Matt Corral, which has definitely been his worst season by a considerable amount for us. Um, Dalvin Cook, however, running the ball, also not too great, but as a 200 running back attack, not bad. Uh, 1,100 yards, 11 TDs. We got 13 touchdowns from Reeves. Uh, Colin Johnson had a little bit of a breakout year, 99 catches, 1,300 yards, 6 touchdowns. Gaddis, not bad. Uh, definitely a significant drop off here from Juju Smith-Schuster, who's been hitting, you know, 1,200 yards, 12-plus touchdowns since we've been here. Defensively, Carlisle had 131 tackles, one pick. 107 tackles, four picks here from TJ Watt. Uh, seven and a half sacks from Joey Bosa. Outside of that, though, that's pretty embarrassing, getting after the quarterback. Uh, TJ Watt also led the team in interceptions on a team that has a couple, you know, eight fringe 90 players and Jalen Ramsey, so that's interesting. But uh, we got a long ways to go. We got a long ways to go. We're going to pop a bear this. So for those of you that haven't seen this yet, it's where we play the moments and we'll step in when things get a little shifty. If I felt really, really attached to this team, I might just play the whole time. But the fact that we still have one more rebuild to go after this one to finish up the series, 
that will be the one I put a lot of investment on. What team will it be? Wink, wink. Who knows? Uh, so yeah, let's get into this game against the 10 and 6 Colts. It's at Heinz Field, so we'll have the home fans hopefully amped up, and it'll give us that special edge to move on to the. All right, we have the weather conditions. I mean, I don't know. Do they get snow in Indianapolis? I honestly don't know for the life of me. We're down seven nothing. What the fuck? Come on, let's do it. Let's tie this game up, which we do. Make it 7-7 here in the second quarter. Looks like a defensive battle. Neither team able to move the ball with great success. We'll, we'll chalk it up to the weather conditions and not the quality of the team. We missed the field goal. No. Third down. Make the, oh, come on. Third down. Here we go. Coming in the fourth quarter. The weather's been terrible. Third and seven. We need something magical. We will go jet six drive. Hopefully with... Us controlling it. We can tap into that elite ability Juju Smith used to be able to bring. Oh my god. Oh my god! Come on, man. No one broke free as Ray gets his third sack of the game. LeBron Ray, Alabama. That was table. That was a covered sack. I swear to god, are their jerseys white? Come on. Third down, we're coming in. I swear. They're wearing white jerseys in the snow! My old man eyes can't handle it. Neither can can t Brad Brad Terry Shaw. All right, we'll go tight end stick. We got two minutes left. Now the downside of this scenario that we're in is that if we score a touchdown, they have two minutes, and we all know they never use their timeouts to try and regain the lead. As we avoid the sack and we hit Juju Smith Schuster to tie this game up at 14. We need our defense to step up big. Come on. Oh, they do. They force the punt, and we're in the red zone. Oh, it's third down in the red zone. Okay, third and inches. We spent big money. We spent big money the last two years in free agency to bring in a running back. Last year was Todd Gurley. This year was Dalvin Cook. For this scenario, exactly to move the chains, which he does. 98 yards on the day. We take it up to the 16-yard line. This should be. Oh my God! What are they doing? What's going on here? Why, why are we kicking the field goal with 30 seconds left? Okay, I'm going to tell everyone to subscribe to my YouTube channel. We're going up against 10 mile an hour wins, but at this point in time, this is the only chance I can get a channel plug. Uh, I think probably the next video, tomorrow's video, there's going to be a big update to the Patreon. So uh, I'm having a whole, pretty much redoing the Patreon. And if you thought about contributing the first time you're hearing about it or you, you know, left from last year, uh, stop by, check it out. There's a bunch of great features that I think most of you will enjoy. As zero's on the clock, the Steelers make the field goal and are moving on to the division round after a very ugly game against them. Alrighty, Titans. Titans stand between us and the AFC Championship game. They do have uh, Justin Herbert from Oregon is their franchise quarterback. And this is not looking... Oh, my God. Well, it's not looking pretty. Hopefully we can... Have, if they can do it, we can... Oh, my God. Then we're selling for field goals. This is fucking embarrassing. Oh my god, this is brutal. Oh man. White flag! They put up 35 points in the first half against the 93 overall defense. Oh, what happened? What could have been? Get me out of this game. 41. I mean, we're making it slightly respectable, but this is just like in college football against Alabama. With it. They just put in like their freshmen. Oh, that was... Oh my god, 44 to 28. Justin Herbert was perfect. Four touchdowns on the day. As he puts the final nail in the coffin of the Pittsburgh Steelers rebuild. How many touchdowns? What did he do? Yeah, I mean, that's the one. We got one pick. Tracy Millie went off. 94 yards. CD had better yet numbers than Dalvin Cook. I mean, they have defense. Do they have anyone? Derek Landry's brother, or Harold Landry's brother. Oh, hey, Jalen Ramsey, shout out to Jalen Ramsey for getting a pick. But that is not the way I expected this to the end. Uh, but, uh, you know, much like much like all things Madden 18, the end is near. So, uh, thank you for tuning in to episode 19 of the Altman Rebuild series. Coming this Sunday, which is 95% it's going to come out this Sunday. There's a chance something, things could change, but it's 95% going to come out Sunday. There will be the final episode, the finale of the Ultimate Rebuild series, and will be my final Madden 19 rebuild 
and er, whoa, 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 rewind that. My final eight. Uh, why can't I talk? I'm not even going to edit this because it's the end of the Madden 18 season. It's my final Madden 18 rebuild next Sunday. Make sure you guys tune in. It's going to be a good one. Um, and then some people might be saying, well, there's still like a week and a half until Madden comes out. I'm going to be streaming a lot. There's going to be lots of streaming. I'm getting the fiber up hookup sooner than later, which means my streamings are going to be on fire. So uh, make sure you subscribe to the Twitch. You subscribe to the YouTubes. If it's your first time stopping by. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out. Oh, and who's going to be the final rebuild team, you ask? Haha, <laughs> wait.